Solid potassium chloride is decomposed into chlorine gas and solid potassium. Write the balanced chemical equation with physical states. So we know that potassium chloride is written as such, and it is solid, so you have an S. And it's decomposed to form chlorine gas and solid potassium. We know that chlorine is diatomic, so there are two atoms of chlorine per molecule. So we can set up a table to balance our equation. We have reactants and we have products. We have potassium and chlorine. On our reactant side, we only have one atom of chlorine, but on our products, we have two. So we can multiply potassium chloride by two to have the same number of chlorine atoms on both sides. Now, to balance potassium, we can multiply solid potassium by two to have two atoms of potassium on both our products and our reactants. So by checking our chart, we know that we now have a balanced chemical equation. You react hydrogen and oxygen gas to generate liquid water. Write the balanced chemical equation with physical states. So we have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas being reacted to generate liquid water. Just as before with chlorine, oxygen and hydrogen are both diatomic molecules, so you have two atoms of each element per molecule. We can do another chart to figure out how to balance out our equation. We have hydrogen and oxygen, so we know that on our reactant side, we have two atoms of oxygen, but on our product side, we only have one. So we must multiply water by two to have two atoms of oxygen on both sides. And now, hydrogen has four atoms on the product side, but only two in the reactants. So we must multiply hydrogen by two to have four in the reactants and in the products. Now, for this mode of balancing an equation, there are multiple ways, but there's always only one correct answer. In this instance, we're going to treat our polyatomic ions as one entity. So it's gonna be treated as one atom. We have phosphate, which is PO4, three minus, and we have nitrate, which is NO3, minus. So instead of splitting them up into nitrogen and oxygen or phosphate and oxygen, we're going to keep them as one molecule. We can start with the compound that has the highest number of elements and atoms, which is barium phosphate in this question, and we will give this the coefficient of one to balance out each compound only once. So we can start with barium. We have three atoms of barium in our products, so we can multiply barium nitrate by three to have three atoms of barium in our reactants. We have two atoms of phosphate in our products, so we must multiply sodium phosphate by two to have two molecules of phosphate in the reactants. Now, we have six atoms of sodium in the reactants, and we have six molecule, six atoms of nitrate in the product in the reactants, so we can multiply sodium nitrate by six to have a balanced chemical equation. And you can do a chart as shown in the first two questions to check your work. So for our final problem, we are doing a combustion reaction. And we can start a similar way as we did to the question before by giving the compound with the highest number of atoms the coefficient one. So we can start by balancing carbon. We have seven atoms of carbon in our reactants, so we can multiply carbon dioxide by seven to have seven atoms of carbon in the products. We have 14 atoms of hydrogen in the reactants and two in the products, so we can multiply water by seven to get 14 in the products. Now we must balance our oxygen. We have 21 atoms of oxygen in our products, but only two in our reactants. So to balance an odd number, you can make your coefficient a fraction. So in theory, we would have 21 and a half, 21 halves of an oxygen of oxygen. However, it is impossible to have half if you want a whole number ratio. So what we do is we multiply the entire equation by two to balance out the 21 halves. 
So instead, we have two molecules of heptene with 21 molecules of oxygen going to form 14 molecules of carbon dioxide and 14 molecules of water.